The Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 26 March 2024. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means your present at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. Thank you. Good evening. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to Elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land, and we furthermore acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations people who may be with us. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site of Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. We pray for wisdom, courage, empathy, understanding and guidance in the decisions that we make while seeking and respecting the opinions of others. May we in this meeting speak honestly, listen attentively, think clearly, and decide wisely for the good governance of the City of Adelaide and well-being of those we serve. Now can I ask all those present to stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Tonight, uh, we have apologies from Councillor Lee. I think all others of us are here. Um, could I ask someone to confirm the minutes? Moved by Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All those in favour? All those against? Councillor Davis? I'll take, it, I'll take the vote again. All those in favour? Uh, uh, in favour, sorry. Councillor Kouros, are you? And against. Thank you. Thank you, members. That's carried unanimously. Um, I apologise. We have to record the votes because, as you know, it's against the Local Government Act an offence not to vote in our council meetings. Um, does anyone have a declaration of conflict of interest that they'd like to declare? If not, we'll move on. Um, this evening we have three deputations. Um, I should remind those speaking that each one will last for five minutes. I'll ask the first deputy to come forward and address us. The first deputation is from Mary Kulosnevutsky. I apologise if I've got the pronunciation wrong. Thank you. Please come up to the um, lectern. Thank you. Kolosnievsky, it is. Kolosnievsky. 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 I apologise. Okay. Um, you probably noticed I put a. Um, letter in your pigeonhole just this morning. Unfortunately, I didn't realise that you had already voted on the 27th of February to extend the scooter trial until April 19, 2025. So the content of the letter you'll see when you, if you get it out of your pigeonhole, no doubt. Okay, in the meantime, I was hoping to convince you to uh, not, not renew the trial. That was my agenda, and still is. Okay, just if I'll be as brief as I can. Okay, I'm very, very, very sorry to see that the Council elected to have another 12 months of this trial. We've just been through the torture in, in Unley, the city of Unley. It took two years for me to get rid of the, the scooters in Unley. Two year campaign of petitions and speeches and lobbying and begging and so on. 
They finally made a sensible decision in this year in January to get rid of the scooters. The vote was seven to three, seven to four. So the three-year trial is over. Everyone is extremely pleased to see the back of these awful scooters. Very good win. You might also may or not know, but the Charles Sturt Council in October last year got rid of their scooters, ended their trial. So the scooters have disappeared from Stuart, uh, Charles Sturt Council too. So two good wins. And you may, may or may not have seen in the newspapers. In the city of Paris, the mayor of Paris, the, the wonderful Anne Hidalgo, ran a referendum in Paris last year. September last year, they had 90% people support by residents to get rid of the scooters in the city of Paris. So Paris is now free of these appalling scooters. That's a great win. Okay, so I've got a few things to say, not too much. Okay, I'm wondering why the council has agreed to another 12 months of this trial. I come into the city a couple of times a week to the market and so on. Every time I come here, I'm horrified to see the banks of scooters on in front of the law courts, some special locations like the corner of, Pol of um, King William Street and Hindley Street. There's often 12 or 15 of them lined up not being used. And they're hardly ever used. You can, you've noticed that so few people riding these things. Very seldom used except late night on Friday and Saturday night. <clears throat> the drunken young men coming home from the pub. It's easier, could get an Uber or walk, but they don't, they, they get the, 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 the uh, scooters. So apart from that, they're hardly used at all by anybody. So it's a very strange thing that there's still so many of them here. And I don't know what the, what the involvement of the state government is. That's yet to be seen. I'll be working, I'll be seeing Mr. Coots and Tonus soon to beg and plead to get rid of these fiendish scooters. If they can do it in Paris, we can do it here, can't we? Yes? Yes, you can, in fact. Okay, in the meantime, because they're so seldom used, it's clear to me there's something funny going on here. Why would you have these scooters lining the footpaths not being used, running at a loss? So the two scooter companies, Beam and Neuron, obviously not making a profit. They could not possibly do so because the scooters are so rarely used. They must be running at a loss, so there must be something happening here behind the scenes we don't know about. And I'm guessing, so it's only a supposition, that there might be some money laundering going on here. Now, it's very hard to uncover that sort of thing. So now, as I was here at the meeting when Frank Pangello, the last meeting, had a very passionate speech to you, begging you to not to, do, not to renew the contract. Well, you, you ignored him, of course, as I noticed. I'm you did. sorry, I'm, I'm really... Sure. A, a point of order coming from Councillor Davis. Um, my understanding on publishing rules, given that we're live streaming this, some pretty... It, it might be wiser not to accuse people of money laundering. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> my, my, yeah, can I, can I ask the speaker not to make those types of accusations? Um, I'm not making them, I'm making them, that's a question, it's not an accusation, it's a I, possibility. I've, I think it's probably best that we don't publish anything of the sort, <clears> but <throat> um, we've sir. heard it now, and perhaps you can go on speaking and try not to repeat it. Okay, in the meantime, <clears throat> there's got to be questions asked why they are so seldom used, and why there's so many of them if they're on the full paths. They're not being used by anybody, except a handful of drunken boys late night on Friday and Saturday nights. That's who uses them. Almost nobody else ever does for good reasons. And also the amount of, the amount of harm they're causing on the, on the, in the form of um, admissions to hospitals, especially the Perth Hospital. Now, in the last year, they had 200 presentations from a scooter of people being run into by scooters or falling off scooters, being injured by scooters, same with Melbourne, they will be follow the, the figures around the, around the country. And they're causing injuries where they need not be happening at all. And that's because they're so seldom used, questions need to be asked. Why are they there? And when I'm, I'm not accusing anybody of corruption, but the question needs to be asked, why are they still there if they're making a loss? So I suggest that money laundering is certainly a possibility. And I won't retract from that. It's up to me that I'll get into trouble for that one in, in the meantime. So I'm hoping the City Council will do something sensible in the, when it comes at the, in the end of the year and turn you back on the scooters because they're not being used at all hardly. The streets look appalling. Every time I go down the, down the CBD, there's blue or purple, uh, purple or orange scooters, often a bank of 12 not being used, blocking up the footpaths or thrown to the footpaths. It makes the city look very scrappy. They should not be there. There's no reason for them to be there. He said there might be stuff behind the scenes we don't know about. So I'm hoping to persuade Mr. Frank Pangello 
uh, for House MLC to do something about it, to investigate the, the possibility that there is money laundering in fact. Thank I you. don't know if there is. I'm hoping there's not. But I suspect very strongly there's something, something like that's going on. Okay, I think that's all I've got to say. In the meantime, I would have thought the City Council's job was to look after the footpaths and to preserve the beauty of this lovely old city. Not allow this junk to be on the footpaths, colourful, dangerous, unneeded and unwanted and unused. And we did it in Unleys, it's done in um, Charles Sturt. Um, who else is doing it? Paris is that done in Paris. So the, the councils are finally growing some brains and say this guy, they can't go on. If they're not used, they shouldn't be there. And as for the, as for the questionable motives for them still being there, that's another story. So I'm hoping Mr Pangallo will use his considerable influence and power to see what he can do to find out why they're still there. And Mr Coots and Tonis likewise needs to be asked the same questions. Well, thank you very much indeed for your comments. That's um, okay. Thank you for attending. Um, um, can, can I just Councillor. ask your, your, wish, um, your Lordship if the administration could consider whether it would be helpful for a motion from the floor? Like we've heard what the, the deputy has said, but I'm uncomfortable with that testimony remaining on our council website um, and to have that removed from, the, from what gets posted on, onto YouTube. Can I ask some advice? He got sick. Yeah, through the Please don't engage in cross-chamber banter. Through the presiding member, we'll take some uh, legal advice and act in accordance with Thank that you. advice. Thank you. We don't think a motion is required. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the next deputation, which is from Dr Faber. Thank you very much for coming in. Again, it's a five-minute address. Thank you. Councillors, I address you with some reflections on the civic cohesion of the city in time of war. In our multicultural city, rumours of war, however so howsoever apparently distant, resonate with us and our communities. In the Migration Museum precinct, two plaques commemorating crimes against humanity and United Nations legislated international law stand in particularly poignant relation. One remembers the Holocaust, the other the Nakba catastrophe or ethnic cleansing of Palestine. At worst, their proximity announces a civilised agreement to disagree. At best, it reminds us that all conflicts are ultimately resolved in the objective historical process. Fortunately, these days, denial of the Holocaust is rare. Unfortunately, media denial that the ongoing rape of Gaza constitutes an episode of genocide is prominent in the press. This denial is provocative and intended to divide the community, not without some effect. However, it flies in the face of recent developments. This very morning, the Security Council mandated an immediate ceasefire and release of hostages confirming the prior demand to the parties of Secretary-General Guterres. This follows the interim ruling of the International Court of Justice that Israel must demonstrate restraint and answer a prima facie case of genocide. A peculiar aroused psychology is manifest in time of war. Breaches of peace in the city can be touched off by the passions surrounding these matters. Late in December last year, around 5 p.m. in the afternoon of Friday the 18th of December, a breach occurred which had to be reported to police. That day there were two distinct manifestations in the mall calling for a ceasefire. A fit muscular young man with anger management issues, passing the second, returned on his steps to assault a peaceable activist, shouting, you know nothing, you people. I've been in Afghanistan, and where were you on October 7? I was present and moved to defuse the situation by persuading the assailant to move on. Three times I tried unsuccessfully to engage with him and was apparently ignored until he reached through a screen of colleagues and pushed me to the pavement. The police investigation was obviously hampered by the random nature of the attack and the guilty party's quick exit from the scene. There were, however, 
underwhelming aspects to the investigation, mainly the constabulary's unwarranted acceptance of the mendacious description by a self-described independent witness of particulars to the interaction which had not happened, which would not have convinced the account, that is, a first year tutorial in logical history. Moreover, police claimed that the closed circuit TV installed in the vicinity of Fulgurman Spheres was insufficient to capture footage of the incident. This point in the mall is virtually the city's most frequented site for civil observances. The corporation may consider looking into this matter and remedying the problem to better monitor the space. Thank you. Um, thank you. We will check that area. Um, Mr. Baggett, now, um, to talk to the petition that we've all received. This um, request came after the publication, but it, we're happy to have you speak to us, Mr. Baggett. Thank you. Again, five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor and Council, for um, agreeing to hear me tonight. I thank you for that and also for accepting the petition. I speak on behalf of some 40 or so petitioners, some of whom are in the gallery tonight. Um, and since the submission of the petition to the, to the, to the um, town hall, others have come forward wishing to sign. The petition, as you may be aware, seeks an inquiry into the merits and citing of the proposed upgrade to bus stop number five on the very popular free bus service. So where is bus number five, you might ask? Councillors, I'm sure, are aware of the, in general terms, the route of the free bus. Just to remind you, it travels up uh, King, uh, uh, Tent Street towards the park lands, crossing O'Connell Street, and it comes up to the T-junction between Lefebvre Terrace and Tent Street, where you will see probably all know, the um, playground, I think it's known as the Glover Playground. At that point, the bus turns right, and there is a bus stop right there. That's bus, bus stop number four. The bus, um, when it moves off from there, continues towards the city, down Lefevre Terrace, another 300 or so yards, and then turns left into Kingston Terrace. Bus stop number five, is about 40 metres into Kingston Terrace, so very close to Lefevre Terrace. So bus stop number five stands at the top of Kingston Terrace, um, and it's proposed that that bus stop be upgraded in the near future. So what is the, bu the up upgrades which is intended? The proposed upgrades to the free bus stop number five includes, I think, five aspects. There's an asphalt or concrete path of about 40 metres in length heading eastwards along Kingston Terrace, which gives access to the bus stop, but only from Lefevre Terrace. This path leads to a concrete pad in the order of six metres by three, and that forms the, the bus stop itself and it is possible that there will be a handrail on that, as you might expect for a disability orientated upgrade. The purpose of the upgrade is indeed to comply with disability discrimination standards, and I understand that at least $150,000 has been allocated to the upgrade. Let me set out concerns of the petitioners. First of all, let me emphasise that the petitioners are very supportive of the free bus service itself and equally supportive of upgrading to improve access to transport to those with disability, from whom, um, amongst the petitioners, there are actually quite a number. However, one of the greatest concerns of the petitioners is the lack of access to the free bus service from the locality of Lower North Adelaide at the bottom of Kingston Terrace Hill. The residents down there, and I've door knocked the near area, so I've recently seen many of them, um, they appear to comprise 
two groups in the main. First of all, there are elderly widows and couples, many of whom already suffer from impaired mobility and no longer have a driver's licence. The other group that's remarkable or very noticeable down there is families with young children in the early years of schooling. Now, when discussing the petition with relevance in this um, locality, we encountered remarks such as, we wish we could use the free bus, but it is too far up the hill, and even worse now that I have a walking frame. Others with young children said things with this character, we would use the free bus, but it is too far for our little ones to walk, and we have to take the car up to North Adelaide Primary School onto O'Connell Street. Almost everyone we spoke to said we would like to have a bus stop closer. Now, questions of equity were raised by some. It was pointed out that on Lefevre Terrace, which is above Lower North Adelaide, that's my time, sir. Chamber to extend your time by two minutes. That's granted. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, at the top of Kingston Terrace, sorry, at the, at the top of the hill on Kingston Terrace, there are two bus stops quite close together, about 300 metres. Number one, number number four, and number five, as I outlined. On the other hand, at the bottom of the hill, it's a much longer to walk up, a distance to walk up, and you've got to walk up a hill. And a number of comments have been made. Well, that doesn't seem quite right. It seems as if we have much less access than other people in North Adelaide, and why do they have two at the top of the hill and we have none? So I, I pass on to you that, that those comments have been made. Another concern is the strong aversion to any loss of the natural edge of the parkland. This view is strong from the top of Kingston Terrace right to the bottom, and held very firmly by me. Of course, this bus stop seems to contemplate quite a lot of metres of concrete or asphalt along the edge. Another major concern, again widely held by not just the petitioners but people in North Adelaide, is the much prized appearance of the corner of Lefevre Terrace and Kingston Terrace. Not only are there natural glass grasses of some significance, but also a huge respect for a wide variety of, of the trees and the landscape some people say they like to drive down um, the Fever Terrace and they think of the work of Hans Heysen when they get to that corner. So many of those people are saying they fear the consequences of a big piece of engineering at the top of the hill for, all, for the damage that it will do to that, to that area. So this petition draws to attention, the attention of the council um, the, these concerns uh, and as they are brought, drawn to your attention as matters to be considered. We are at this stage seeking an inquiry only and we commend that to the council. Could I make one last remark in relation to the council's own contact to me today? I think Mr McCready, your, um, uh, the person who looks after your uh, uh, areas of work in this, in this regard contacted me and said that he was uh, talking to um, a, a town planner about it um, shortly and would we be happy to, to, to be involved in that, that process, which we absolutely would. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Mr Baggett. I can confirm that we'll bring a report back about the location and the money that was to be spent on that site and Council will put attention to this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, the formalities about the petition. Uh, could I ask that someone move receipt of the petition moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Davis? Um, all those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, item 11, which relates to Special City Planning, Development and Business Affairs Committee. Um, there's only one item, which is the draft City of Adelaide Economic Development Strategy, moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Noon. Unless there's any debate, all those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. I'll move on to item 12, which is the City Finance um, Committee. Um, 
I think that we might recognise items one and two on the agenda as uncontroversial and maybe move one and two together. Councillor Seedentritt moved by seconded by Councillor Davis. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. Then to establish the setup of our committees um, before we get into the details, can I suggest that we might move one to five on block and we could debate that setup uh, together? Would someone move one to five together? Moved by Councillor Davis, seconded by Councillor Elliott. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, would you like? Uh, on block for the five items, yes. Well, you could if you wanted to. It went through the committee, but please, if you want to speak against those five, please do. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Um, I rise to speak against the committee structure. I think I've, uh, I've voiced my concerns uh, repeatedly uh, throughout the last 12 months. Um, my reasons being is because, I, in, in my belief, I believe it's uh, inefficient and, uh, and it has unnecessary costs asso associated with the governance structure. Um, I believe the financial implications, I believe it brings, brings financial implications, uh, the additional costs uh, has incurred by the new committee structure and it burdens the, the ratepayers financially. Um, it creates public confusion. The voting process in committee and subsequent changes in the council meeting can be perplexed for the public. Um, administrative constraints, uh, the rigid schedule imposed by the committee structure restricts the freedom of the administration to present reports at their own pace. And lack of uh, in decision making, the disconnect between the committee agenda and the subsequent proceedings in the council chamber is a significant concern. I feel that the two agendas, the agenda gets a little bit clunky, if I can use that word. Um, in retrospect to what is happening in committee, the decisions that are being ma made there and it being transferred here into the council um, agenda. So for those reasons, I will be voting um, against the committee structure and um, um, I hopefully uh, will look forward to changing this in the future, but I don't think that will be likely. Yeah, I, I also would like to speak against this motion. Um, from what I've seen, um, of the committee meetings, we've, we've had to shut down a committee meeting um, briefly, then open up another one for two minutes and then shut that down and go back to the first one again. Um, that type of um, behaviour, I think, disrupts things and it demonstrates that the way that these committees are structured are, uh, quite frankly, just awful. The, the, the more appropriate way to structure these committees would be to have one committee um, so that the administration can determine an agenda um, on items of relevance. So the way that it's now at the moment we force a certain category to come at a certain period and quite often we have um, very long and extended committees of whichever are the two, the first ones and then everyone's tired and then the second ones get cut off quite shortly and we move through without any debate. Um, to me that just puts an emphasis on two of the committees rather than um, across all four subjects and rather than being able to structure the agenda in a, uh, you know, a preference of importance um, and, and infrastructure it in that way so we spend the most time on the most important subjects, what we end up doing is spending a lot of time on perhaps least imp less important things and then we just skip over the ones in the second committee. I also I find it really abhorrent that the way that um, we've essentially been able to, and I, th I think it's um, really disrespectful to our ratepayers, particularly when proposing um, such a massive, uh, considering rate increases this year, that the committee structure is basically a structure to provide elected members or some of them, whoever get chosen, um, an extra $7,500 a, a year. Uh, and in my view, that payment figure is not anywhere near um, what is in line with the actual amount of work that is involved by the chair. The chair actually has no additional duty. They're only there to chair the meeting. They don't have any power of direction. They don't have any power of influence in their areas at all, at all. Uh, and that's actually set out in the local government act that they don't have any additional influence over those agenda items. So to me, it looks like a way to um, feather our own nests to put more money in our own pockets and I think that that's a really disappointing thing. My view would be to have one committee so we can um, workshop things essentially with the administration beforehand and have that chaired by the Deputy Lord Mayor um, who already receives um, a, uh, an increased payment 
um, above uh, the duties of the rest of us, and that, that would seem appropriate, because I do believe that the committee is helpful to actually have the Lord Mayor um, in that table. So that's me uh, summing up the item, and I'm, I'll be voting against this. Because the councillor has summed up, because he moved the substantive motion for parts one to five. So I'm sorry, Councillor Noon. I'll put that to the vote. This is part three, um, sorry, recommendation three, parts one to five. All those in favour? All those against? A division has been called. Members, a division has been called in relation to parts one to five for recommendation three. Please stand until your name has been called in favour of the motion. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Seben Tripp, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, that was carried. Uh, no, I'd like to now move items nine to 17. Six. Sorry, six, yeah, sorry, six to 17. Why not? Um, because we're required to have structured the motions yeah. to have formal motions. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy. I'm very happy to be Well, uh, yeah, all at once, and then I'm happy to move. Um, well, my, my suggestion would be we do the votings in the nomination process, and then we move it as a block uh, for the remainder. Sure, and then we can, yeah, and then I'll remove the rest as a block. Sure. Um, Councillor has moved 6, 9, 12 and 15. Is there a seconder? So just had a, a, a point of order, a, a question, Lord Mayor. What a, my observation is that uh, Councillor Davis is looking to move these and then immediately sum up so he can be the only person speaking to them, which I think actually has denied Councillor Noon the opportunity to present a counter-argument. I think it's important to have a debate around governance. So I'm just um, wanting to clarify. I apologise. I'll make sure that Councillor Noon speaks okay. in this block. Thank you. Look, I'm very much in support of this governance structure, and I have a, um, a quite point, a, of, order. Very a point of order. order. Sorry, I just have a point of order. The, um, so who's going to give point of order? Yeah, I have a point of order. Not, I saw first, I'm oh, sorry, sure. she gets precedence. Lord Mayor, um, I'm just calling a point of order in regards to the item that we're talking to about appointing council members, not about the committee structure. Um, it's about having all. She, Councillor Noon has only just stood up. I think she's going to talk about having all council members on the committee. She hasn't had a chance to say what she's, her intent is. She has not had a chance to say. I haven't caught the flow of her conversation yet. I'm sure she'll burst into something <laughs> into relevant song? in a moment. <laughs> Point of Look, order I'm, I'm very supportive of having uh, a structure where we have, um, where it reflects the streams of the organisation as, as we actually have here. And I think it's really important that um, these are absolutely addressed. And I think having a, a governance structure like this, this is the best uh, practice governance structure, structure that and we And having have. all councillors on each committee. And having uh, councillors on each of these committees is really important. And it's, uh, I think it's most of us did not in the you know in the past 12 months when we actually were appointed to these particular committees had no idea we were going to be paid. So that was a bit of a surprise to Lord me Mayor, when I again, actually found sorry. out that we were going to be paid and be Lord quite Mayor. happy not to actually. Lord Mayor. Noon has been speaking about the number of people on the committee. The um, item in front of us does not talk about remuneration. It talks about uh, appointments of selecting council members to the committee structure. We're Can veering we, off Councillor, the item in front of us. Thank you for your clearly, advice. Yes. Point Councillor of order. Noon, finish, please. Uh, clearly, sorry, uh, uh, there are councillors around this a, table who would like to stifle oh, sorry, can I, good governance discussions. You sit down? No, I, I have got a point of order. I do have a point of order. Um, in relation to, so um, Councillor Noon has, uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Kouros has raised that the member's not speaking to the, um, the motion of appointing. Um, you've made a ruling, I understand, that there is no point of order 
I would like to challenge your ruling to say that there is a point of order, and, and I disagree with your assessment, and like to put it thank to a you vote for in the your, chamber. Thank you for your comment. Um, I don't know if there, you'd like to move that to a vote, would you? Yes, I'd like to, to, challenge, I'd like to challenge your adjudication on the point of order that the member is not speaking yes. to the motion. Okay, and do you, does it require seconding? Has anyone seconded? Councillor Kouros. Seconded. Um, we'll take the vote on that then. Um, who believes, who wants to uphold the point of order as I declared it? Who agrees with me, in other words? Who agrees with my point of order? I think that's the process, isn't it? Davis's motion, which is that I have erred in my adjudication. All those in favour of Councillor Davis? All those against? That has been lost. Now can we go back to Councillor Noon, who will finish speaking without interruptions, hopefully. Oh, look, I just think we should put this to the vote. This is the very best governance structure that we could actually have. If anybody wants to watch the previous Council's governance structure, where they were actually having dinner or you know, at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning, because yeah, they only okay. had one committee meeting, then um, good luck to them. So let's actually just proceed with this. So now let's vote on 6915, I'm putting the Yeah, I'm in, I'm in favour that we start voting. Members, the division has been called. Please stand in favour of parts 6, 9, 12 and 15 until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Ho, Councillor Siebentrup, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Councillor Davis as well. Thank you. Um, relating to number seven, um, which is a decision to appoint a councillor as the chair of the City Community Services and Culture Committee. Um, can someone move that we appoint a chair? Moved by Councillor Noon, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. And now could I ask for a nomination? Sorry, um, no, I, I believe that now we just go straight into voting. You don't need to move that we have a chair. That's what the six nine whatever it is so we just go into voting for all of them I oh, thank you for your advice um, would someone anybody like to nominate for this position councillor martin uh, i nominate councillor giles lord mayor any alternate I to second that. okay yeah, but that's fine are there any other nominations um if I think you need to leave the room so that we can vote on this, Councillor Giles. This is no other nomination, no other nominees. In that case, can we have that put to the vote? It was moved by Councillor Martin, and I think seconded by Councillor Noon, um, if you'd like to carry on in that vein. All those in favour? All those against? I'm sorry? We don't usually speak to these nominations. There's only one nomination, so I don't see how you can speak against it. A division has been called. I have. Councillor Giles was just nominated as chair of the City Community Services and Culture Committee. Sorry, Lord Mayor, just for clarification, I just, for procedural and on, on... I can't clarify any more than that, I'm yes sorry. Or no? I'm sorry, I'm not clear, sorry. I can't clarify any more than that, I'm sorry. She was just nominated and voted of for... Of what I'm asking procedurally, it, each nomination, can you speak to it? That's, I'm not talking about right now. You can speak to it Thank if you, you want to, but it helps if there's something to vote against. You can vote against all of them, of course. A division's been called. 
Members, please stand in favour in relation to part seven of the motion before you until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Siebentrip, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. That's actually tired. Lord Mayor, before we continue, I might draw the attention of the oh, Chamber sorry, to what uh, happened last yeah. time we spoke on nominations of members and the toxic debate that followed. Um, division was tied, so I'll vote in favour of Councillor Giles. We'll vote again. It was, there was a, can you just leave Councillor Giles out there? Um, we'll take the vote again because it was a tied vote and I didn't vote. Um, those in favour? And those against? That's carried, thank you. Can we ask Councillor Giles to return? Lord Mayor, can I just ask a question around the, the voting on this, which I'm not clear, if there's only one nomination, how can you vote against one nomination? Um, I think that it's just just the role of a dissident. Um, we'll now move on to appointing a councillor as the deputy chair of this committee. Um, councillor Giles, do you have a nomination? I nominate uh, Councillor Snape as deputy. Are there any other no nominations? Okay. Um, Councillor, you don't have to leave the room. It's an unremunerated position. Um, so, and there's only one nomination. So, uh, can, so can we endorse that? All those in favour? Sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. That was moved by Councillor Giles. Did someone second it? Sorry. Councillor Noon. All those in favour? All those against? One, two, three, four. That's carried. Thank you. Division's been called. Members, a division has been called in relation to the appointment of the Deputy Chair, Part 8. Please stand in favour of the motion until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Siebentrip, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. So we'll Thank you. Now, can I have a nomination, please? A nomination? Lord Mayor, I wish to nominate Councillor Noon. Councillor Noon, nominated. I would like to... Can I raise a point of order? Um, I'd, like, I'd like to bring the Council Chamber's attention to Section 75 of the Local Government Act. Um, I have deep concerns um, that Mem seven members, or I suppose six members around the chamber, know who's going to be appointed to each of these positions. Um, and I believe that there is potentially an agreement. Now, if there is an agreement between you, which is okay, um, you have a conflict of interest because you're essentially trading the chairmanship from one committee to another. My, my view is that all of those people who are going to be appointed to these committees, we don't know who that's, well, some, I believe some of you do know who that's going to be. Four of us do not know who that's going to be. Those people As who are going to be appointed. As a matter of clarification, I don't know who that's going to be. There are five of us. Okay, five of us then. So my, my suggestion is if you do know and if you have been subject to understanding who's going to be appointed to these positions, you have a material conflict of interest under section 75 by an agreement to trade your votes with each other. And I'd like to bring that as a point of order to the chamber. And I intimate that I'll be bringing a Freedom of Information Act to your phone records and to your text messages. And it's beyond my power to recognise one from this chair. Can I suggest, can I suggest that yeah. we do this as one voting block? To avoid any kind of circumstance, I'm sorry, where members Councillor. Are placed I in a can't conflict. manage one voting block. It's too difficult. I have to do them in series. I'm sorry. It's too. It's confusing enough as it is. So um, we've got to this point where Councillor Noon's been nominated for the chair of the City Planning, Development, and Business. Are there any alternate nominees? No. Um, in that case, Councillor Noon will vacate the room. Lord Mayor. 
So now we'd have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Elliott has moved. Lord Mayor, can I also ask a question just uh, on yes. legal advice, noting that this may take some time. Um, previously, we've had a motion to request that uh, an item where uh, accusations of collusion or money laundering were uh, requested be removed from the public record of the chamber. We've just had several more accusations of collusion and, and, um, and improbity being made in this chamber. Can I just seek some legal advice as to the, um, the, the, the appropriate way to handle collusions, um, I'm sorry, accusations of collusion from within the chamber I, being I made? I think there are mecha mechanisms, and, and the intentions of those mechanisms members being mechanisms for a complaint by of this sort if the councillor thinks there has been um, a breach of the Act, and I recommend he takes that path. Look, may, may I just say I've been threatened just then with an ICAC investigation. That in itself is a breach of the Act. Uh, this is intimidating behaviour. I, 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 I did not say that. Can you sit down, Councillor Davis? I, I, have a I, I request that the members of his grouping cease with this tactic immediately. It is grubby beyond belief and offensive, and I expect an apology. Uh, I, um, I'm happy to give a personal explanation to that. I did not say that at all. I said that. I know this, you absolutely. drew attention to section 75 of the Local Government Act. I recognise that, that, that there were inferences. So but let's, I wanted to say let's that, just move that, ahead. I just wanted to say that type of collusion and not declaring a conflict, which is okay, you can collude, but if there's a conflict of interest where you've traded votes and you have an understanding of who's going to get what position, that is I think the, a very, very dangerous circumstance for this council to be I in. don't believe that I have evidence for conflict of interest and under my understanding of section 75 of the Act. So we have a nomination in that Councillor Elliott has nominated. Are you seconding Councillor Noon? Well, just take a second first and then we'll have a question. Deputy Lord Mayor, a question. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I believe when this committee structure was first set up, there was a debate or discussion um, at the workshop or um, during committee when this structure was being created that the idea was to change the chairs uh, yearly so others can have um, uh, their time on these committee chairs. How is it that these chairs um, are not being changed? And number, excuse me, Mr. Sorry, I draw, uh, your, I draw Mayor, your attention um, to regulation. I believe that David Elliott is interjecting. Interject. Um, 29. And I believe that uh, you haven't reprimanded him for doing so. I've just asked him not to interject. I don't think and he I'll can reflect. And I apologise reserve. I don't think you can reflect on previous decisions in that way. Um, we'll carry on to take this vote. So we've now we're now about to appoint Councillor Noon. All those in favour? All those against? A division has been called. Members, a division has been called in relation to appointing Councillor Noon as the Chair of the City Planning and Development and Business Affairs Committee. Please stand until your name has been called in favour of the motion. Councillor Elliott, Councillor Siebentrup, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin. Thank you. That was carried. You need to do your vote. Sorry? You need to do your vote. Oh, I'll vote in favour of the proposition. Um, Can we call? So we'll call it back, Councillor Noon. Thank you. Now we'd like to appoint a councillor as a deputy chair. Do we? I'll just wait for Councillor Noon to reappear. Thank you. A de deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Kouros. Um, councillor Kouros has been nominated. Um, so, uh, Lord Mayor, I decline. Um, I was originally the chair of the uh, infrastructure uh, committee um, and I agreed to give this structure a go for 12 months and as per my reasons that I've put forward in my debate, I don't feel, it, feel that, that this structure is um, constructive enough. Uh, I do not believe that it uh, it's efficient and I do not believe there is transparency in the decision making this council. Therefore, I uh, withdrew you. from I being a chair and I withdraw, I would not agree to the nomination. Thank you for that comment. Uh, do we have any other nominations? Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Planning and Development. Would no, you thank you. He has refused. Councillor? I'd like to nominate Councillor Ho. Councillor Ho? Mayor, I decline. Because I don't, no matter what we do tonight in terms of nomination, at the end of the day, I bet everything on table that it will, the four position for the chairs only come out from the six members. Thank you. Thank you. And to anticipate Councillor um, Snape. Councillor Davis. 
I'd like to nominate. Go ahead. Sorry. I'd like to nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, will you accept the nomination as the deputy? Oh, look, Lord Mayor, if I may just thank the deputy Lord Mayor for the nomination and the opportunity to commend this committee structure. Uh, I remember the old system in which we all gathered in one room. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. I, I was looking forward to the opportunity to talk to extol the virtues of the current system. But yes, I accept, Lord Mayor. So we have you accepted or declined? You've accepted. Sorry, I was so confused by all this. Um, can I ask that we put that to the vote unless there are any other nominations? I fear there are not. All those. Oh yes, a mover was Deputy Lord Mayor. Seconded was Councillor Giles. All those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. And against? The division has been called. Members, the division has been called in relation to appointing Councillor Martin as the Deputy Chair of the City Planning, Development and Business Affairs Committee. Please stand until your name has been called in favour of the motion. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Siebentrip, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you, members. We're moving inexorably onwards to number 13, which is a decision to appoint a councillor as the Chair of the City Finance and Governance Committee. Can I have that moved by Councillor Noon, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor? All those in favour? All those against, that's carried, thank you. Now can we have nominations for the City Finance and Governance Committee? Councillor Noon? I wish to nominate uh, Councillor Siebentritt to the Chair. Councillor Siebentritt, accept? I do accept it, however at the moment I only intend to do this for another 12 months so we can rotate. Thank you. Um, any other nominees? If not, count. I'm just waiting. Is there no other nominees? Can you leave the room? Thank you. Um, could I ask then that it, this was moved by Councillor Noon and seconded by <coughs> Deputy Lord Mayor, was it? All those in favour? All those against? A division has been called. Members, please rise in favour of the motion for Councillor Stephen Tripp to become the chair of the City Finance Governance Committee until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Deputy Lord Mayor. There appears to be no obvious nomination, so I'd like to suggest uh, former Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin. Can I see if there are any other, any other nominations? Because that would give him an extreme amount of work. No other nominations? Hmm. Um, in that case... Lord Mayor, in the interests of um, contributing to the greater good, I'm happy to nominate myself and take on the the workload and share it with the, uh, the existing chair. Thank you. So we have two nominations then. Do you want to withdraw, Councillor? Yes, I'll withdraw. Thanks. Thank you. Um, in, in that case, um, we don't have to ask people to leave the room on this one because there's no remuneration. So I think that Councillor Elliott has been appointed to this role. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, I need a mover and a sh um, sorry. Can I, that was moved by Councillor Noon, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. All those in favour? All those against? Division has been called. Members, a division has been called in relation to appointing Councillor Elliott to the Deputy Chair position of the City Finance and Governance Committee. Please stand until your name has been called in favour of the motion. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Siebentrup, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. That's been carried. We'll move to 16 to appoint a chair for the Infrastructure and Public Works Committee. Can I have a decision to appoint a chair? Moved by Councillor Noon, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. All those in favour? Well, there's against the decision to appoint has been made. Now let's have nominations. Councillor Noon. I wish to 
to nominate Councillor Elliott. Councillor Elliott has been nominated. Any other nominations? No. In that case, can I ask Councillor Elliott to leave the room? And we had a seconder, I think it was Deputy Lord Mayor. All, all those in favour? I'd like to speak against the motion if I can. Of course you may. Um, yeah, I, I, my, my view is that um, it was apparent to Councillor Elliott before coming into this chamber who was going to be appointed to which positions on which committees. Um, and I'm very concerned that all the chairs who have been appointed should not be in this room as they have material benefit. Um, and, I, and I have deep concerns. I don't think that the way in which this was conducted behind closed doors and the organisation level, it clearly extremely organised, um, point, point, point of order, Lord Mayor. I think this is government. the point you made earlier, so you don't need to repeat it. And I have a further point, that the behavioural code is very clear about the way in which each elected member should treat other elected members. And what is occurring here is a breach of that behavioural code. Point of order, Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor, uh, someone who has the call who is speaking, please In relation to what? I don't know what we're in relation Lord, to. Lord Mayor, how, what is he's speaking Councillor, for? I'm, I'm sorry, you, a procedural Lord I'm Mayor. telling you, I am warning you. Can you let the Councillor finish? I want to know what he's talking to. Lord Mayor, I move Regulation 29 in respect of Councillor Kura. She has been doing this all night. She does it every meeting. Point of order. I don't understand. Please explain. Ignores warnings from the Chair repeatedly. It is the most appalling behaviour and clearly in breach of that regulation which requires that elected members do not interrupt meetings and that they do not cause the kind of calamity that's occurring here. So at the moment we're in the position of having one member of council out of the room um, and I think we should suspend that um, decision while this takes precedence. Um, so I'm, can I just, do I need to move for adjournment of that item that lay on the table? I think that I need to have that item lay on the table in order to allow us to manage this. No? Sorry. Sorry. Well, in that case, I do need to get the councillor back in the room. Um, and I am concerned that if we don't manage this properly, then we will we'll have a procedural issue. Uh, can I just get advice about how we can, can, can deal with 29 when we also have another item before the, the chair? advise that since he wasn't in the room when the um, behaviour occurred, it would be better if we dealt with um, the call on Regulation 29. Um, so Councillor Martin has um, suggested uh, or declared that Councillor Kouros has behaved improperly. Would you like to explain yourself, Councillor Kouros? Uh, Lord Mayor, I was Make a personal asked, explanation. I, I do not feel that I was uh, behaving improper. I feel that uh, Councillor Martin is using Section 29 as a weapon to intimidate councillors in regards to their questions, in regards to the procedures that they are before them, to help them understand the, what is happening before the meeting. I was questioning whether Lord, the deputy, the Councillor Martin was speaking to the motion or was he speaking in contrast to something else that's been said. I was tr merely trying to follow the procedure and that I feel that I'm being intimidated by Councillor Martin because he has the numbers in the room to, be, uh, to, to remove me from this chamber and I don't feel that's appropriate behaviour. That is not democracy and that is bullying. So thank you Councillor for your explanation uh, which again um raised other matters. Can I ask you if you would leave the room under section 29? So now we have a point at which Councillor Martin um, 
may move that Councillor Kouros has contravened Regulation 29 of the Local Government Act um, by behaving in, in a disorderly manner. I think that was his intent. Um, do we have a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor? Can I put that? All those in favour? Against? I'll, I'll vote against that as well. Um, can we now ask the councillor to come back in? It's lost. Sorry, I've got a point of order. Councillor Martin no, is councillor, please let trying to talk to me. Please, please. Lord Mayor, look, I've just been I threatened just, again, and I, I am I've got a point of order. horrible. I'd like you to sit down and just let me deal with one thing at a time, because otherwise it becomes impossible. Councillor Kouros, um, we have had a vote, and I can advise you that we have resolve that you have not contravened Regulation 29. Would you sit down, please, and let's try and get on with this meeting in a more orderly manner. Um, now, let's get back to the matter we were addressing, which was, let us vote on Councillor Elliott as the Chair of the Infrastructure and Public Works Committee. All those in favour? Councillor Giles, are you voting? Or against? Four. Um, can we count vote again, please? In favour? One, two, three, four, five. Against? That is carried. Thank you. Can you ask the councillor to return? A division has been called. Members, a division has been called to appoint Councillor Elliott to the chair. Actually, I don't even know what. Um, is it the Infrastructure and Public Works? Yes, Sorry. Infrastructure, infrastructure and Public, and Public Works. Works Committee. Please stand in favour of the motion until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Sieberton Tripp, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 17 of this. Councillor Ho. Yes. Do you really believe that it doesn't have, they don't have a deal? Um, I don't think that's a valid question without notice. Um, number 17, can we have a councillor to be nominated as a deputy chair of the Infrastructure and Public Works Committee? Oh, where, is, where is the councillor? Hold on. Has Councillor Elliott... Can we find him? Um, in that case, we'll continue. Um, could I ask for a deputy chair, please, for the Infrastructure and Public Works Committee to be nominated? Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Councillor Corus has been nominated. I think I've stated my. Councillor Corus declines. Councillor Noon. Um, for the sake of time and moving this on, I'm happy to nominate for that because it's in line with the city planning as well. Um, Councillor, I, I was thinking that I'd have to nominate. <laughs> what a relief. Um, I'm very happy to do it if nobody else wants to do it. So Councillor Noon has been nominated, seconded, um, it's moved by Councillor Giles, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Any other nominations? If not, um, we'll have a vote on that. All those in favour? All those against? Divisions called? Members, a division has been called. Please stand in favour to, to favour to appoint Councillor Noon as a Deputy Chair of the Infrastructure and Public Works Committee until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Siebentrup, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. That's carried. I think we're going to move on to 13 next. Um, item 13 is the... Infrastructure and Public Works Committee. If there's no dissent, we could move on block items one to seven. Moved by Deputy Lord Mayor. No, I, I, I wish to ask uh, Lord Mayor if um, two and three could be moved separately. Two and three moved separately. Thank you. Um, so would you be happy to move one, four, five, six, and seven? Yes. 
happily. Moved on block, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Is there any dissent on that one? In case all those in favour, all those against, that's carried. I think that was unanimous. Did Councillor Davis vote? Could we take that again? All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, I'll now go back to 7.2 and 7.3. Um, that's recommendation two and three. We'll take two first. Melbourne Street improvements. Recommendation two. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I am delighted to speak in favour of this, but I have a question first. Um, um, seconded by Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I have a question first. Uh, in um, the administration's reference to the under veranda lighting, um, it mentions that it's going to propose a similar treatment as between Lombard and Gover Streets as an illustration of the type of lighting to be installed in Melbourne Street. Um, can I ask the administration, did council install veranda lighting between Lombard and Gover Street? And if so, when did this occur? Um, can I ask the administration to respond? Through, uh, through the presiding member, Mr McCready. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, we physically haven't uh, put lighting in, but we're using it as a similar treatment in regards to what we're proposing, which would be similar to festoon lighting. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I, I couldn't hear that. We did not install it. Is that the, the answer? I'm not sure. I think we did not. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, we did not install lighting as in significant lighting along that street. We have installed lighting, but we are using festoon lighting, which is a similar lighting treatment in regards to Melbourne Street. And, and has the council installed any other uh, similar lighting in O'Connell Street apart from the section in Lombard and Gover Street? Through you, Lord Mayor, the only lighting that we've installed recently in O'Connell Street was uh, lighting, as you would be aware, Councillor, off trees um, that we used uh, during the festive period, and it's uh, running uh, both uh, along both stretches of O'Connell Street. But that's and, not festoon. No. And Lord Mayor, just one final question: Does the administration recall when this festoon lighting was installed between Lombard and Gover Streets? I think this is quite a difficult question. Through, through you, Lord Mayor, I'll take that on notice and respond back notice. to the elected member. Okay, thank you. Um, look, Lord Mayor, I, I think, uh, and I thank the administration for their answers, I, I think this is uh, an extraordinarily good proposal in every detail, um, except, of course, for, and I express this at committee, um, the, uh, the DIT proposal that we not proceed with the crossing at Ronald McDonald House. It, it is a priority. Um, there are children crossing there uh, in what is a, a hazardous circumstance, both lanes of traffic uh, on most days, and I think um, that it is on our uh, capital list is important. That it becomes a, a matter of some urgency um, is, uh, is also uh, something that I'd like to recommend. Um, uh, may I say, uh, Lord Mayor, um, I, I agree with you about the bud lighting uh, that's proposed. It, <laughs> it is a sort of once over lightly that you see commonly through suburban Adelaide, often in people's houses and front yards, and, and something a bit more substantial would have been better. But I do understand there are limited funds, and I am grateful that the street will be adorned particularly with planters and new banners in a way that I think will go some way uh, to to addressing the concerns of retailers that our planned Main Street upgrade, the one that this council has initiated through a number of Main Streets in this city, I think it will assist them in feeling much better about that trading environment until we get that, uh, that new Main Street upgrade in. And I, I do commend this to members. I hope that they will support it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I first would like to thank um, a member of Adelaide, Lucy Hood, for bringing this uh, forward as part of her election promise to revitalise Melbourne Street. She has heard from the people on the street and it's consistent to the um, roundtable discussions that we had last time in council to what is um, put forward here. So she's listening to the same things that we are listening and she's putting um, her money forward, a state 
money forward to revitalise the street. Um, so anything that is required in regards to anything further, as Councillor Martin has said, with um, the crossing would uh, come out of, um, obviously, through the motions of Council. So I commend uh, Lucy Hood. I commend her, uh, uh, her fulfilling, fulfilling her election promise and I really look forward to um, this being um, implemented on Melbourne Street. Thank you very much. Um, and this is an alternate view. We'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. I did see your hand earlier. I'm sorry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just had a question relating to funding of, uh, or a funding implication for, uh, oh, sorry, I've lost the number now. Are we 7 on the pandas? I've got a BIOS update on my screen, which is blocking half my view. Uh, uh, recommendations three, item uh, 7.3. Um, we're still doing 7.2 at the moment. I do apologise. I was out of the room for quite some time. Thank you. So, Will, you're, you're speaking to Aloysius? So, uh, sorry, I came into the room under the, on the understanding that we were um, addressing all items at once, so I'll withhold my comments oh, until the appropriate So, item. we'll take 7.2, which is the Mel Melbourne Street improvements. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you. Now we'll move on to St Aloysius College. and. Did you want to move that? I'm very happy to move it, and I have a question, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Moved and seconded by uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. My question relates to the funding implications. In the report that we were provided in committee, um, it indicated that it was a $125,000 commitment over, uh, sorry, $250,000 $250, over two years, $125,000 per year, and $80,000 for the consultants uh, to engage consultants for a citywide review of these school zones. Emery, this relates to Councillor Martin's motion on notice about all the city schools, but I can't quite remember the exact details. Can I yes, sorry, this, I'm just connecting what's in our report today to what was previously provided to us, Lord Mayor. Through the, through the uh, presiding member, the proposed ballot, uh, budget allocation referred to in the report to committee uh, was a total of $500,000 over two financial years uh, based on uh, $250,000 in 24-25 and a similar amount in 25-26. Great. Thank you for that clarification. I have one point further that I wish to clarify because $250,000 is listed in our um, recommended product, uh, projects to fund uh, through our uh, budget deliberations so far, but I'm not seeing the $80,000. I'm just wondering through to... The, through the presiding member, uh, we believe we'll be able to fund the consulting costs uh, in the current financial year. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for that confirmation. Thank you. Um, I would th Councillor Martin, you had a hand in this. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, uh, my reason in asking uh, for this to be pulled was simply uh, uh, to, uh, one, say th this is a great outcome. It's uh, significant that we're moving as quickly as this to address what is clearly a dangerous circumstance and by um, affecting changes to the architecture of the street. But I just wonder if I can ask the administration to consider as part of the process of looking at safety around all schools, school zones in Adelaide, uh, and it is an issue in all school zones in Adelaide, to consider working with schools themselves, as happens in other states, other places, uh, to ensure that there's not that massive traffic at the same point in the day every day. In some schools, there are rosters where parents picking up children, bringing vehicles to school zones, um, uh, elect to arrive at a particular time. So it's a staggered uh, traffic jam that occurs outside the schools and it becomes less dangerous. And moreover, the school is directly involved in ensuring the safety of students moving from the pavement two cars. I think that's a really significant uh, uh, thing that schools can do to assist in ensuring the safety of students in schools in the City of Adelaide. Thank you. I think we've got that back and the well, project... Through the, through the presiding member, I think it needs to be noted that in dealing with these um, transport safety issues, uh, the council administration makes a point of engaging with the school administration um, where necessary, get the support of the school board um, and uh, we'll ensure that the consultants review 
uh, takes account of that. So uh, put that to the mode. Do you need to sum up, Councillor Elliott? No, I spoke on this in committee. Thank you, Thank you Lord Mayor. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, members. So we'll move on now to 14. Um, so item 14 was the city finance um, submission to the local government elections participation review. Can I have someone move this? Moved by Councillor Seventritt, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Is there any debate on this matter? Councillor Seventritt? Just did want to make some uh, brief remarks, uh, Lord Mayor. And it, it's interesting to me is that whilst at times it might seem that there's nothing but uh, debate and difference of opinion here, I think there were 36 items that uh, council members were asked to discuss here and agreed on 30 of them, uh, including the need for importance of uh, compulsory uh, voting for the House of Assembly uh, role. So I just wanted to I suppose, share the observation that uh, at times we can reach quite strong consensus around important issues like this, is, which is how we all end up in this place here to make good decisions. All those in favour? And those against? Councillor Davis, were you voting? All those in favour? All those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, members. So we'll move on now. There's no CEO's reports. Um, I'll make a brief report relating to the end of the festival in the Fringe. Um, some of you would no have known that Little Amal was in the city and pulled a huge crowd in Rundle Moor. The 3.5 metre puppet was um, organised by the Adelaide Festival and has travelled around the world uh, as a symbol from Syria. Um, many of you attended the civic reception for the Multicultural Communities Council of South Australia, who presented Quiet Achievers Awards on uh, as part of their um, celebration of International Women's Day. Over the last six years, they've recognized extraordinary women who've worked tirelessly for their community. And on this occasion, 10 women were honored. Um, like Councillor Kouros, I attended Greek Independence Day. Um, I went to the Cathedral of Archangels Michael and Gabriel on Franklin Street. Um, you would know that March the 25th, for those of you who celebrate um, religious festivals was also the Feast of the Annunciation, um, an important date in Greek culture. Um, it gave us an opportunity to remember how much the Greek diaspora had done for our city um, and reminded me that we have made an initial approach about becoming a sister city with Athens, but uh, there's much more work to be done on that matter. Um, I also would like to pay tribute to the former Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor David Plumridge, whom I'm sure many of you knew who died this month at the age of 91. Um, he had an extraordinary career, both as a mayor in the city of Salisbury for eight years and in our council, um, where he was an area council, councillor between 207 and 14. He served as the council's chair on the City Development and Sustainability Committee and was a member of the Reconciliation Committee as well as the Adelaide Parklands Authority. He had an extraordinary and um, important role well ahead of its time in Salisbury where he spearheaded the water sensitive urban design principles, um, built wetlands and stormwater detention basins which were subsequently important in aquifer recharge. Uh, during his time in Adelaide, Mr. Plumridge was a truly honorable and thoroughly good man. He was actually a consummate negotiator and a staunch supporter of good governance and particularly conservation, protection of parklands and heritage buildings. So our condolences go to his family. Thank you. Could someone move my report be received? Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Abraham today. All those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. Um, Councillor's reports next. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll seek your indulgence to read off my phone, if that's okay. I've made a few notes around a couple of events that I attended. Thank you. I understand that. In the last uh, two weeks. Um, on um, Friday the 15th of March, um, I represented you, Lord Mayor, at the, and, and the City of Adelaide at the Adelaide Motorsports Festival. Um, as a lad from the Isle of Man, home of the Tourist Trophy, I'm uh, particularly excited to hear about their uh, motorbike, motorbike fueled by carbon uh, neutral synthetic fuel, as well as the EV Ford Supervan and the inclusion of a 2,000 horsepower electric racing car. So. Um, uh, it's great to see their uh, EV endeavours come to life. Um, on Thursday, the 21st 
uh, of March, I'll just pull up the right one. Um, I represented you again, Lord Mayor, at uh, the Artworks uh, Curator and Artist Talk uh, right here in Town Hall. Uh, Artworks is a City of Adelaide cultural strategic partnership program that allows us to team up with uh, Guildhouse to host artist residencies, a writer in residence and an emerging curator opportunity. So I thank you for the opportunity to represent you in the City of Adelaide. Thank you. Sorry, microphone, Lord Mayor. If you, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Um, motions on notice. The national LGA motion rescission from Councillor Giles. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillors would remember that we discussed. We were discussing this issue, um, which was linked with um, a motion about my attendance at, a, at the national meeting following the. Australian Council of Local Government at, in Canberra. Um, and so I was absent from the room. Um, I intended to um, extend, the, extend the time frame for councillors to, to um, submit motions because a number of councillors had asked whether or not um, it was possible to do so. So all this motion will do is, is to rescind the motion that notes there were no motions um, in order to be able to um, make a little bit more time so councillors can get in motions if they would like them uh, uh, submitted to the national forum. And since um, um, I signal that I do this, we've had um, one motion come in and I just would like in to encourage all councillors to think about what they would like on behalf of our council to be discussed at the national, me at national level. need clarity that's okay um, why didn't we submit motions the first time what well, I mean I have no problem with this but um, I'm just wondering why didn't we submit the motions first time why we didn't we because nobody put any into the system and now there are some other late applicants and it seems quite reasonable that we should rescind I, I have no problem with it uh, as I said Lord Mayor I'm just asking why and second to that the motions that the motions that are coming through um, are they going to be put through as a recommendation for us to vote on? Councillor, they will come forward and we will vote on them. All oh, right, thank you. Um, so can I ask uh, that we now put the rescission motion, all those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Now the next part is to replace the rescinded motion uh, with the new deadlines and the times that any submissions have to come back in. So Councillor Giles, it's self-explanatory. Do you need to speak on it? No, seconded by uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. Uh, we'll move on to 18.2. Councillor Martin, who's seeking to lift the $10 million cap, or investigate it. Councillor Martin? Seconded by Councillor Noon. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, this uh, motion directly follows the receipt by the last council meeting. Um, of the annual report of our own expert panel to consider development applications, the CAP. Uh, and you can see at point four of the administration response, the precise words of the CAP request and the motion I put asks the administration to come back to council with a report that would form the basis of a formal request to the state government through, of course, you, Lord Mayor, and through, as the administration suggests, the Capital City Committee. Now, the intent is clear and consistent with the council decision from January last year that we want an increase in the $10 million cap on developments approved by council. Uh, it is a limit, as you will read from the administration's response, that has not been changed for well over um, a decade and a half. Um, uh, but the, uh, the motion I've put forward is just a, a little broader uh, to capture also possibilities which have been considered by the council administration and the state government, um, that we also consider whether some types of development might be discreet uh, to local government, that is the approval of them. So uh, uh, as an example off the top of the head, um, some classes of uh, development like um, multiple residences under a certain height 
might then fall into the purview of the council assessment panel rather than SCAP considering it with whatever limit is agreed. Um, look, it's fairly straightforward, Lord Mayor. It's consistent with what our CAP has proposed and it seeks approval for a two-step process. That is uh, a submission from the administration uh, to the council before anything happens. Uh, and uh, then we can determine where we go. And I thank the administration, Lord Mayor, also for their assistance in putting together this in response to the assessment panel report. Highlighting the fact that it's been in place for 16 years. Yes. Lord um, Mayor, Councilor I'd just like to declare conflict of interest. However, it's not a material conflict of interest, so I will stay in the room, but, uh, and I will vote, but I will not participate in debate. debate. Thank you. Um, his general conflict it, that he's about to explain to us that he hasn't is the fact that he's on cap. Yes. He has explained. We're on. Um, Councillor Kouros. Uh, Lord Mayor. Sorry. Is a qu oh, yes. Uh, I'll get back to you. Sorry. Oh, that's, that's fine, Lord Mayor. If I'm, I'm, I Seconder, Councillor Noon. Um, I really commend Councillor Martin for putting this forward. Um, he picked me on the post, actually, because... I, this is well overdue and I had intended to do something similar. I actually even did a quick calculation of what $10 million would in, 20, in 2008 would mean in 2024 based on inflation and it's nearly double. So, um, and I commend actually CAP for their report uh, to encourage Council to pursue this matter. And it is really important and it's perfect timing at the moment when we're doing the city plan and the state government is doing the Greater Adelaide Regional uh, Plan. So I actually think that this is uh, great timing to put this forward and, um, and I really, really support this and hope my fellow uh, councillors will also support this. So Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I have a question, sorry, uh, to administration. Um, this has been subject to discussion for last term of council. It's been six years that I've known. And also the many years before that, as you said, it's been in place for 17 years. I just want a, um, a confirmation. Is there an appetite for them to look at this? Or is this something that we're requesting? I mean, I just heard Councillor Noon say that they've asked us to, or is that right? Um, I don't think we can predict an appetite without actually formally making, having a discussion. I don't think that's possible. But I believe that we had requests in the past many times. Um, I believe that from the discussions that we've had in the past uh, that this wasn't something that they were favour to do. I mean, I'm happy to vote for this, but I'm just wondering, has there been any new discussions since then? So no, in other words. Okay, thank you. Oh, I'm just I want a yes or no answer. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Answer. Um, so, unless there's an alternate view, Councillor Davis. Uh, I just have a question of, um, through you, um, Your Worship. The, if we were to increase the cap from $10 million to $50 million, um, I know that there are fees that uh, we recoup as part of the development application process. Um, would we actually be at a... Like, how do those fees work? Is that full recovery? for any costs associated with the development, or does council actually, uh, will that be an increased burden on council for those uh, planning applications? Um, assessment of that by doing some examination, and that's part of the report. Um, I, can I ask a follow-up question then? When, when somebody makes an application under $10 million um, and we charge them a fee, does that fully cover all of the staff costs um, uh, in relate? Does that fee cover everything? Or does council make a loss as a result of that application? I'm not able to answer that. Uh, through the presiding member, um, can you, uh, Mr. Haridis, can you explain briefly the fee regime that applies to development applications assessed? Uh, excuse me. Thank you. And through the chair, um, on a case-by-case -case basis, whilst the fees do look to cover costs, it's it's difficult to state on every occasion, depending on the complexity and how much work may be required in back and forth of the development for those under 10 million. Um, in line with the motion, uh, we will certainly bring an analysis of the impact of fees and the work effort um, that would be required by council uh, should the threshold change. So we're asking that we have a report. We're not actually setting a position. So unless there's any contrary view, Councillor Abraham today. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll be happy to uh, provide a contrary view. Um, Lord Mayor, before I uh, uh, join the discussion, can I just ask if the mover is uh, happy to uh, take this item in parts? And I'm uh, really interested in um, uh, um, excluding item three. So happy to take item one and two on block, but excluding item three, taking item three separately. So I'm happy with item one and two, but um, uh, I won't be supporting item three, even though it's a noting item, I'm mindful of that, but um, I just want to see if the mover is happy to take it in, uh, in part. Um, just clarify that item three is just noting that a report went in. Mm -hmm. So it's just noting something retrospectively. Would yes. You, not, you don't want to yes. note it. Uh, no, because I didn't agree with uh, with that particular uh, point that's been raised in item three. But um, um, yeah, happy to uh, okay. uh, to, to right. elaborate on it. If, um, okay. Well, we'll take it in parts, and you can vote against it. Thank um, you. Thank and you. And this Lord is a contrary view. Can we move it to vote now? Or are you going to speak? Oh no, no. I'd like to speak to it if I may, please. Um, so, uh, Lord, Lord Mayor. Um, um, this is an interesting one, and uh, uh, and I think Councillor Noon touched on the fact that uh, there's been a, um, a bit of a change in that $10 million threshold, and um, yeah, I think it works out to roughly about 15 or $16 million uh, if we were to look at it now in, in 2024. Um, but I guess, uh, Lord Mayor, some of the feedback that I get from uh, uh, from those in the in the industry uh, and even those in, uh, uh, in state government is that um, they use certain examples of decisions that this council has made, and if we are to approach state government and tell them to increase that threshold uh, and subsequently uh, give us some um, uh, authority and power to look at uh, uh, more significant development applications, if we are not able to uh, uh, make sound decisions um, and the example that's been uh, used in my conversations with some of these figures uh, is that of the uh, fence for the for the comets? Even though that's not a, a development application, but that is that is there. They are the examples that these figures have referred to, and they refer to the maturity of this council and the decisions uh, that are made in this chamber. So I'm just afraid that uh, if we are going out and requesting this of, this of the state government, if we're not able to, can um, I just make ask you not to reflect on the cap because they're independent members. Uh, they're professionals and they are chosen because of their skills and it's unbecoming of you to Lord, Lord Mayor, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just referring to some of the examples that have been, uh, that have been used um, uh, in my conversations with some of these figures, but nevertheless, I, I, I have tried to, uh, uh, um, to, to correct them where, where it's needed, but they do, they do look at us uh, and some of our decisions more broadly in terms of how mature we are and whether if we are ready to, uh, to have these, uh, the, this sort of authority and, um, um, and, and decision making. Nevertheless, as I said, I'm happy with with, with one and two, uh, um, I won't be uh, supporting three, even though it is retrospective. Oh, Lord Mayor. Sorry, hold on. I, you, Your Worship, I actually asked you for the call. I put my hand I up. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. You looked straight at me. Can I, can I, 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 like to I speak often to stare at you in the I course know, of I, the evening. I am stareable. <laughs> um, can I speak to the motion before you ask the summer? I think I've given the call to Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I am slightly disturbed by what I've heard in the first instance suggesting that we don't note something that we've already decided, um, which seems to me a bit unusual. But furthermore, um, this is about the Council Assessment Panel and its capacity to assess developments. A and I wouldn't reflect on the capacity of the individual members of, of that uh, panel, which has been doing a sterling job in dealing with the developments that it has in the city of Adelaide in the period that I've had any knowledge of its workings. Uh, and indeed, uh, I would have thought that Councillor Abra Himsaday would share my view as a long-time member of the Council Assessment Panel and understand that Council itself has no role in the Council Assessment Panel deliberations. Lord Mayor, can I just provide a personal explanation? Apologies, Councillor Martin. I, I'm happy to, for the Councillor to do that when I've finished. Oh, OK, sure. Uh, Lord Mayor, the, I'm happy for him to explain why he said those things, but I am just saying our council assessment panel is a body of people who act 
and think independently about development. And their decisions, their decisions would be enhanced by the capacity to consider a broader range of developments of a higher capital value. Um, just as Councillor Abraham Zadeh himself advocated Sorry, I have a point the of period order. he was there. The, the, the deputy, like the, Councillor Martin basically said that Councillor Abraham Zadeh shouldn't reflect on other members of CAP and now he's reflecting on Councillor Abraham Zadeh. And indeed, Lord Mayor, I, I, uh, I'm surprised. I would have thought that uh, Councillor Davis would also be supportive of this. And the substantial uh, developments that have occurred as a result of our council assessment panel's decisions. Uh, look, members, I would ask you to overcome uh, any uh, concerns that you might have, noting that this is a report that's requested that will then lead to consideration of a possible submission to government. Uh, it is straightforward. I urge you to support it. And then we'll take the motion in parts. Th thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, my comments uh, were not reflective of uh, our council assessment panel. My comments were related to uh, this council chamber, so I just wanted that um, clarified. The two. Um, we'll put parts one and two together of the motion as moved by uh, Councillor Martin. All those in favour? Against? That's carried. Thank you. And now part three. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you. That's carried. Um, Councillor Kouros. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Abraham today, seconded. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, basically, I'm asking for Council to note the positive impact the festival season has brought to the East End and re requesting administration and the and AIDA to review all current sponsorship arrangements under the purview of the invest to investigate ways to collaborate with the state government and significant event organisers and festival organisers spread further the positive impact and cultural impact of events of Hutt Street, West End and North Adelaide. Um, I would like a plan to collaborate an approach to, do, uh, to develop uh, specific actions to prioritise economic and cultural impacts events in these regions of the City of Adelaide and request administration to report to the Council with the recommendations and findings. Um, basically, I think that sums it up um, in total. We know that the events in the City of Adelaide are loved and they're loved um, by people that do not live, work or play in, North Adelaide, in, in the city. Um, so we would want to encourage more people to come to the city and to expand the festival out into uh, areas which there can be economic benefits um, for the businesses in that the precinct. It's a conversation, it's a plan, it's uh, an investigation. There is no budgetary impacts here, which I'm sure Lord Mayor you'll be pleased about that. Um, and uh, I'm basically asking to, for um, admin to, uh, to bring those conversations forward to us um, so we can review their thinking and ways that we can expand <coughs> on these um, festivals. Do you have any comments? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. I uh, thank Councillor Kouros for bringing it to, to the Chamber. Um, I know that uh, over the past few years she has been working behind the scenes and uh, working with stakeholders to try and spread the love a little bit. Um, uh, as Councillor Kouros mentioned, we do love the, uh, uh, the festival season. We love the way um, Adelaide comes to life. But uh, uh, it, it is about time that we actually look at how we can um, uh, spread that love right across the city and North Adelaide. Um, for members, if you do go through uh, the city during uh, Fringe and Festival season, uh, if you go anywhere um, west of uh, um, King William, or in some cases west of uh, Pulteney Street, uh, the, street, uh, the streets do tend to uh, be a little bit more uh, quieter and of course if you go north of the river uh, um, uh, things are uh, more quiet up there but um, uh, um, what I think Councillor Kouros has done in this case is for us to really look at how we can uh, spread the love so that everyone can do well out of uh, Fringe and Festival season. Councillor Noon. Lord Mayor, there is indeed a lot of love in the chamber here this evening because I too wanted to talk about spreading the economic love that comes off the back of festivals. And thank you, Councillor Kouros, for bringing this forward because we know that there are uh, traders and businesses, whether it's in uh, Hutt Street, the East End, uh, North Adelaide, West End, uh, who are interested in getting more benefit from the festival. I did look at the administration comment, though, where it's referred to in part two of their comment 
uh, around a potential action that will come out of an economic draft economic strategy that would address this. And I just, just want to make sure, so a question for the administration is that if this motion was to go ahead, do we risk doubling up on what will already be in the economic strategy or would they be done in unison? Through, through, the, <coughs> through the presiding member, I don't, I don't believe there'd be a duplication of uh, strategy. Uh, if nothing else, uh, we'd be uh, reinforcing in the report um, the um, appropriateness of the strategy proposed in the draft. Councillor Noon. To ask exactly the same question as uh, Councillor Stephen Tripp. Councillor Giles. Uh, yeah, I just also like to um, support this motion um, and thank um, Councillor Kouros for bringing it to our attention. It's um, it's uh, for those of us that live in the city. Um, we saw the um, Adelaide City Council tr try and do a really good job this time around with the capacity that we have to spread the love, as people call it, of, um, by having the inflatable church in Light Square and there was a fantastic family fun day in Whitmore Square which was really well attended. Um, and, but it's not, but I think what it requires is not for us to sort of compensate for the fact that there isn't that other activity elsewhere in the city, but actually work with these organisations to, to work out something collaboratively that we can put together where we're partners in that, but we don't have to compensate for the lack of events, but we actually create something in the west west of the city in particular, but also in North Adelaide um, during that period of time. So that not just not just for uh, sharing business supp um, uh, support, but also so that uh, residents of the city can feel like they're in part of a festival and visitors who stay in hotels in other parts of the city away from some of the bigger venues actually know there's a festival going on and it, there are, I've heard, I heard stories this year of people who were in the western side of the city who actually didn't know the festival was on um, and were asking where it, or asking where it was. Um, so um, I think this is a great addition to the sort of work we've been talking about um, previously about looking at our culture and, and, and support of communities right across the city. Councillor Martin, do you have a point? Oh, no, only I would have to say I would have to vote for this. Anyone that can weave in the archaic word purview into a motion <laughs> deserves a vote. Uh, ju just the point that has been made, and I'd ask the administration if they would take on board that it's not just the areas that are mentioned in this motion, areas like Chinatown, which Councillor Ho is uh, often uh, speaking of, those are the areas as well that need to be considered. So I, I wouldn't want to see it just restricted to Hutt Street, the West End and North Adelaide. Um, I'll actually stand to speak because I couldn't quite find a way to fashion this into a question, so it might be just better to voice my concerns rather than try and send the staff off into a pointless hunt to find an answer to a question I'm not asking. Um, I support the motion. I do want to raise the, um, the, the point that there seems to be an, an intent um, to already do this um, that's come out of the, the draft economic development strategy. However, that's not my concern. My concern is that um, the largest festival in the Southern Hemisphere, the Fringe Festival, has um, seen a, an increasing rate of concentration within highly curated areas um, to the detriment of a lot of independent programming and independent venues. Um, in a time where we're seeing a lot of our independent and live music venues declining, um, I, I see this really sitting quite tenuously. Like it's it's a very it's a very tense relationship between those venues which are in decline and an active effort from local government to interfere with the curation of a, what is supposed to be an uncurated festival. And I know there are other events that occur at the same time. There's the Adelaide Festival, which is intentionally curated. I know that we have motorsport festivals. I know that we have cabaret. All of these things happen around the same time, but Fringe is still the largest, and that has a very particular effect on live music and small venues. And I'm, I'm hoping maybe there can be some administration comment that comes out of this reporting process rather than tonight um, to spare you the pain. How that will affect, or it's anticipated to affect, those kind of venues, and how it will specifically support those that aren't identified as um, what's the wording here, leading cultural infrastructure um, or, or main stakeholders, because they're not main stakeholders, but they're important stakeholders to the cultural fabric of the city that could potentially be 
inadvertently and disproportionately affected by this level of intervention from local government. Thank you. I'll just keep it uh, very, very brief. Um, look, I'll just to agree with most of the speakers before me. This is um, something that we, we are already doing, um, and although we are doubling up um, with intent, as long as we're not doubling up with work, I'm happy uh, to support this in the spirit of um, kind of everyone, everyone coming together. So yes. Oh, well, we could say the same thing about um, what we just voted before, doubling up, but, you know, we're reinforcing whatever we're reinforcing at the moment. We're reinforcing that this is part of our strategic plan. We're reinforcing that this is part of our economic plan, plan and that we're reinforcing that this is what we want as a council, and we're asking administration to um, work and collaborate with the people that put on the festivals and how that can help support the community outside of the East End. Um, when I mentioned the West End, I th I'm making that clear, it doesn't only include um, Hindley Street, it's also including Guja Street, Weymouth Street, if required. Uh, I don't know what the traders, they're, they're a mixed mind of, uh, in, in, in things there because they're more of a lunchtime trade, but hey, I'm just opening it up for anything in the West. I spent a lot of time this festival not at the Fringe. I spent a lot of time in this festival um, in and around and supporting the businesses outside of the fringe and looking at what was happening there and I can tell you it was really sad. It was really sad to see that they weren't benefiting from a uh, fr from the from the um, festival and we have um, an opportunity here from the great organizers of these events to work with them and that includes the Adelaide Festival that includes um, the motorsports and includes um, uh, many of the uh, organisers um, out there to even WOMAD. Who knows what the limits could be with that? So, Lord Mayor, I think we're all in agreement. I, I would like to move on from it, and I think it's uh, very clear that um, administration um, can work with this. Yep, all those in favour? All those against? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, we're now moving on to. Motions without notice. Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin, I apologise, the pensioners. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, um, in 2021, uh, this council, and I, I remember the night as Councillor Kouros does, uh, the, uh, the then council, uh, for financial reasons, decided that it would dump the $100 rebate granted to aged and disability uh, pensioners as a support measure and it was argued at the time that the $100 that we were giving our uh, pensioners uh, as a rebate uh, was unnecessary because the, uh, the state government was also giving them $240 to help them meet their bills, that is to uh, pay for their electricity which uh, at my household runs into thousands of dollars of years uh, to pay their council rates, um, and that's many thousands of dollars a year, I have to say, Lord Mayor, um, to pay escalating government charges like car registration, and to pay their medical bills in the time when uh, bulk billing has disappeared, all but disappeared. Um, it, the line was that $250 would fix the lot, forget about the $100. And, uh, Lord Mayor, I have to tell you, uh, if it were in my power on that night, um, I would not have reached that decision. And, in fact, if it were in my power tonight, um, uh, and I can hear the collective groans from the administration, I'd be giving all of our uh, aged, and you, our aged and disability pensioners $500 tonight, uh, because what we were giving them was very little. But it did provide something to them, something, $100 if you're an aged pensioner trying to exist on $20,000 a year in a property here in Adelaide uh, which you may have inherited from parents, uh, which you may be living in on your own, uh, perhaps in a wheelchair, $100 is frankly bugger all. It is $35,000 to this council uh, and I believe that it ought to be back on the agenda, that it ought to be part of our budget considerations. Now, I'm not saying let's do it, though that's my sentiment. I'm saying let's put it on the agenda, let's discuss it. 
because I think uh, at, at this time, uh, and I would defy any of you uh, to, to argue that $100 in a rebate to aged and disability pensioners is a miserly but nevertheless welcome consideration in such households. $100 goes a very, very long way if you're living on $20,000 a year. Um, I'll just be brief. I, I think it sounds like it was a dumb idea to actually cut it previously. And I certainly um, think that this should be reinstated. I actually get quite a lot of calls from uh, rate payers, elderly rate payers, especially when we put up the rates last year about this $100. I wasn't aware of it. And when I sort of uh, unpacked it a bit, I could not believe that we actually cut it, to tell you the truth. So, and with the increase of costs in living uh, now, um, yes, that $100 would do a lot, of, a, a lot of good in certain households. So I totally support this. Thank you, Lord Mayor. As one of the people that were here on the council uh, last term, I, I voted um, uh, against um, having this cut and I will be voting for Councillor Martin's um, motion tonight. I believe it's something that we re really do need to revisit and I thank him for bringing it forward. Mood of the room. Um, Councillor Abrahamster, have you got an opposing view? I do, Lord Mayor. Okay. I do. Um, yes, there is a uh, cost of uh, living crisis, but you know what that translates to for businesses? That translates to less customers but also it translates to higher cost of doing business. Now, if we are going to look at something like this, then I think it would be fair for us to look at a similar sort of uh, scheme for our businesses who are also struggling. Uh, and if uh, you, you um, read um, recent media articles, we've had a number of businesses that have uh, shut their doors because of cost of living crisis and cost of doing business. That's, that's all I'll say, Lord Mayor. Let's make this fair. Apply it to residents and apply it to businesses. So let's put this to the vote. All those in favour of Councillor Kouros's motion? Yes. Sorry, Council, I'm sorry, Councillor Martin. Um, Councillor Kouros was so enthusiastic, I got carried away. All those in favour? All those against? Division. Division's been called. Members, the division has been called in relation to Councillor Martin's motion of the Age Disability Support Pension. Please stand until your name has been called in favour of the motion. Councillor Noon and Councillor Elliott, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Davis, Councillor Siebentrup, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. That's carried. Um, we'll now move on to motions without notice. If there are none, we'll move on to questions. Ah, there is a, there is a motion that was put in late, which I haven't seen. Lord Mayor, may, may I propose this to you? Please do. Um, what I'm asking is that the administration provide advice at the earliest opportunity on potential changes to the process for granting exemptions to certain building construction hours of operation to include feedback uh, from elected members. And I do so, and I, I know you will say to me, this is not urgent. Um, Lord Mayor. From East Terrace and around 88 O'Connell. Uh, multiple, multiple complaints, multo complaints. Yes, Lord Mayor. Um, so it's 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 a really about a, it's almost a question on notice because it's asking you for advice about potential changes. Is it? No, it's a motion because I'm asking the administration to provide to us at the earliest opportunity um, a. Uh, a framework in which elected members can be involved in the process to provide the feedback. It, it's not particularly urgent, but it's a very simple process. I'll just accept it and we can move on. Seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, well, I think we've all had the complaints. We all know what this is about. Well, Lord Mayor, in that case, I, I won't labour the point. Uh, it is simply that uh, the legislation governing hours of operation of construction is de determined by the state government through the Department of the Environment. Yep. Council is given the capacity to grant exemptions to what is the 7 a.m. start for construction time. Uh, over the summer months, uh, there is a need to start earlier because of the heat of the day, interfering with the uh, drying of concrete. However, that appears to be continuing and it has become 
uh, according to the residents who are bothering me and most of the other councillors in this room, it has become business as usual. Yeah. And so a, an exemption to start at 4 a.m. usually uh, means that there's activity on building sites at 3 a.m. and building sites which are in close proximity to residences like those at 88 O'Connell, like those on East Terrace. Terrace. And uh, residents are annoyed. Uh, and indeed, they have made submissions to the council administration, uh, which they feel have not been considered properly. And they would like us as elected members to become involved in that process in whatever way we can. That, Lord Mayor, is the nub of what I'm asking for, a means by which we can participate in that, uh, that process. Um, I totally uh, support this, but I just have to say that over the last month, I'd say, um, and the residents are annoying us, that's it. it. They've got every right to actually complain to us. And I have been working with administration on this uh, matter. It's not just East Terrace, it's not just 88 O'Connell Street, it's actually um, uh, the residents uh, around where I live, there's a lot of develop there's a development happening that's actually commencing at four has commenced at four a.m. Uh, U City, I actually had a complaint that over the last two or three weeks. I've got videos, I've got recordings, um, but the administration is being very good uh, in their response. They actually uh, even investigate, have gone and interviewed. Uh, residents down at U City about what's happen what's happening. Um, I'm meeting up with uh, Mr. Skalitsky next week uh, to discuss this further, to look at processes, to look at how we can actually better communicate around this matter. Um, so administration is very aware of what's happening, and there's a real appetite to actually improve processes and to improve uh, because we don't want a city that doesn't sleep for the wrong reasons, let's face Thank it. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Lord Mayor, I will need your assistance on this one, please. I'm sorry, I just I can't. would need your assistance on this one. It's obviously, everyone um, has, is clear about what this means. Um, I'm not 100 per cent sure what this means. I'm not coming with... Um, he's uh, asking for advice. It's not coming up with the conclusion. So he's asking for advice on how to include feedback from elected members. Is that right? No, it's a process of granting exemptions. I think there's a clarity in this that the administration can manage. Um, through the presiding member, uh, the intent of the motion is reasonably clear and uh, we'll provide our best professional advice. I probably would need to explain to me if it's really clear, really clear to you, CEO, acting CEO, I would like you to interpret it to me in another way because I actually it's not clear to me what it's actually asking because I think I, I'm not reading it in, I'm not, there's no, um, rec there's no um, administration comment, there isn't anything that's clear for me to understand what this is leading to or what it's about. Thank you, Councillor. I think we've all had multiple emails, phone calls and messages from uh, residents and ratepayers who are disturbed by the early hours of operation. But as I think we Noon, all know, sorry Lord Mayor, just to help me to understand so I know I, where to place my vote, just, Councillor Noon just explained that she, she has a way forward in which she has supported people through these complaints. Um, what is this mo motion so going to So I think enable? that it's a contentious yeah. issue and I, th I think that it's clear from the number of complaints we have um, that the early starts, which I've always thought have been reasonable in hot weather when the cement pour can't occur in hot, on hot days, has actually been used on days when it's not hot. So that there is um, a bending of rules. Sorry, so, Lord Mayor, I have another question. I'm sorry, just to help me understand, please help me. Uh, how many complaints do, has administration received and um, in regards to these? It's many, many, many. Are we talking five, ten? Well, this is what I'm saying, that it did not have an administration comment. I don't know what I'm voting for. You can answer that. It's asking for advice. It's asking that a report comes back. You can't expect them to write the report this afternoon. Can I, can I ask a question? So my understanding of this motion is that this is asking administration to provide advice so that councillors in the future has nothing to do with the current complaints or anything. Yeah, the, grant, the process for granting exemptions in the future, that council, that the elected members would have input into the manner in which and the decisions that council staff make when they grant exemptions. Oh my God, that's 
No, I don't think that's going to occur. It's going to be advice on what might occur. There may be some feedback from elected members. I pass on all my complaints to the administration. No, I think but that we know that th this um, the administration have said they understand the intent and they will be able to respond to that's it. That's what we're asking for is what is the intent that the I administration I think you have the, you understand the, the, the intent. Um, you, I advise you to vote against it if you don't Sorry, like Lord it. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I don't understand the intent. The way that I read that is that, and please, I'm asking the administration, I'm actually not necessarily asking you. I'm, I'm asking through you to the administration um, for advice. In, in the way that that reads is ask the administration to provide advice at it to, for potential changes to the process by which exemptions are granted yeah. on building construction hours of operation so that that process of granting exemptions includes elected member feedback in future. Is that what those words say? So I'm actually asking through you. Feedback because that's our role. No, no. I understand this question and they are able to respond to it. Can we please have the administration respond? Council, councillor, if Mr. Haridas wants to reply. Can, can I have some advice from the administration? I, I think we've had some advice. What is the advice? No, we haven't. Yes, please. Through the presiding member, the ask of the motion is clear. There are two important parts to it. What, are the, what is the process for granting exemptions? And is there an opportunity for that process to include feedback from elected members? We will provide our professional advice regarding those two aspects of the motion. Look, I'd like so to thank I the acting CEO for that response because that was very helpful. Thank you very much. I think we'll put this to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Division. A division has been called. Members, a division has been called in relation to the motion without notice before you. Please stand in favour until your name has been called. Councillor Noon, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Stephen Tripp, Councillor Giles, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin. Thank you. That was... I have sent my question to administration, but I haven't received a response back, so I'm formally going to uh, ask it here. We used to receive reports on all the FOIs that have come, uh, been returned um, and uh, responded. We haven't received um, such reports since, the, since this council term began. Is there any reason why? I'll answer that, and I don't know anything about it. Can, uh, Mr. Uh, through the presiding member, uh, I yeah, this week earlier this week received a, an email question from uh, Councillor Kouros regarding the provision of uh, information on freedom of, of information requests. I've sought advice from the uh, team uh, on the basis that since my return to Council I've not seen such information provided and uh, we're, uh, we're investigating what has been provided uh, historically, and I'll respond once I've got that advice. Thank you. To Councillor Martin. Yeah, just a question without notice, Lord Mayor, with regard to the petition and deputation tonight on the stops for the connector bus. I understand the administration undertook to provide advice to Council on what the next steps will be. Can I ask the administration whether that will be through committee or through e news or some other means of communication? Thank you. I Uh, this is the bus stop? Yes. Yep. Um, we would propose to bring a report back through Council. Thank you. Um, we move on to the next item then, members, uh, which is exclusion of the public. Um, we have two exclusion clauses. Um, the first one is item um, 23, which relates to contractual agreements with DIT. Can I ask if someone moved, moved by Councillor Noon, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor? All those in favour? All those against, that's carried. And the second exclusion clause 
Um, it relates to planning and land use services um, uh, discussion in confidence. That's item 24, moved by Councillor Siebentritt, seconded by Councillor Noon. All those in favour? All those against? That's carried. Thank you, members. So we'll now move into confidence.